I want a better mobile base for my bandsaw. My current base has two wheels at this end that pivot and two wheels at this end that don't pivot. Two straight wheels, two pivot wheels. That works good in a big shop because you're pushing long distance. You know, like a grocery cart, you want things to track well. In a small shop, you really need four wheels that pivot so you can just go any direction you want. Like on this base, I can't go that way. I, I, can, I can pivot, but I cannot push straight in that direction. So I, I need to get four wheels that pivot on the base that I build. I've been thinking about a base like the one I have on my joiner. It keeps the tool really nice and low to the ground, but it really expands the footprint of the tool. I'm not sure I like that. However, the height of the bandsaw is already like 45 inches. So I don't think I want to just raise it by like four and a half inches by sticking casters under it. Another option would be to just take these legs off and build a box underneath this platform with wheels. But yeah, I'm going with the easy approach right now. So I'm kind of making this up as I go. I think I'm first gonna empty out the bottom, get it off the old base and see if that gives me any ideas. So I've been doing some thinking and I put some wood under the legs. This lifts it up about three inches. So my caster is like that. So there's still going to be a little bit more height if I were to put the wheels down below. And that's just about four feet off the ground, which actually I don't find that bad. But yeah, I'd still need a couple more inches here if I were to just put a platform under it. I'm gonna do more scratching of the head and thinking. Part of the issue is that for a pivoting locking wheel, you need a fair bit of clearance. Like from the edge here, this is four and a half inches roughly to the center of pivot. So that you need that clearance all the way around when you place this somewhere. That's why those stick out so far from the edge of the joiner. Okay, here is my first experiment. I made two of these. And the idea is that this will tuck in underneath and the legs will wrap around here on this plywood. And then I'm going to fit in a cross piece in those notches and then the wheels will sit there so the the wheels will sit underneath there, so they uh, they will clear this, hopefully. So these two pieces go like this. There's the front. There's the back cross piece. And then the idea is that the wheel will ride there. I'm not sure I made enough clearance. Is there enough? And no, I do not have enough clearance. Oh, come on. I thought I had this sorted out. So I figured out my mistake in that I did a add when I should have subtracted when I was figuring out the height here. So if I put the casters here, they're not going to be able to clear this. So, But in the interest of experimentation, I think I'm going to proceed. Let me bring you in closer. So I flipped it over and if we position some casters, I'm putting locking casters on the front but just freewheeling ones on the back. So the freewheeling ones they can actually go that close to the side. The ones on the front need a bit more, right about there. So if I measure, we got like 15 inches, 15 inches, well, 14 inches front to back. And then these are almost uh, 19 inches apart. So this is the experimenting part. I'm not really sure if that's a wide enough stance. I might like it a bit wider, but if I were able to move it over, I would only gain like two or three inches. So I think I'm going to try this first. I'm not, I'm not going to use glue when I put it together. I'm going to as assemble this and I'll put the wheels on and then we'll try it. And if it feels tippy, well, then we'll start over. This is learning and experimenting. So I've got everything flipped back over and put in position. I've got it clamped and squared and I'm going to put in some three inch screws at each corner without glue so that I have the option of taking it apart if I need to.
It rolls. Now we will see how that goes. Okay. Okay. That is really not tippy. I, I'm, I'm quite impressed. I mean, with only like 13 inches, I mean, like, I mean, and yeah, now I, I can move it any direction I want because I'm planning to tuck it in here most of the time, which is why I really did not want a wider stance because I just, it's, it's tight quarters. Yeah. And the locking wheels work. Oh, I see it's just rubbing a bit on the metal. Oh well. So if you're curious about my storage, this is just one of those standard metal bases for tools and it comes with this cross piece. And on the front, I took the cross piece away. You can see I'm keeping the bolts and I lowered it down here drilled some holes and now I have this big open space here and I built this box and there's a slit in the back and that box slides in and on the back that slit goes goes right there on the back. Then I put a couple of screws in there. So the back, this leg is supporting the storage box. And on the front, the base is supporting the storage box. It's all just held in place with two screws. And on the side, I have this weird looking bracket, which is custom milled to fit my bandsaw fence, which tucks in from the side, drops down, and then these is secured there out of the way. I mostly use this bandsaw for curve cutting, so I don't really need the fence that often. So most of the time it's just fine to have it tucked away. And yes, years ago I dropped it and I broke the knob, but it still works. And then I use the bottom for just some tool storage of some boxes that I don't use that often. It is kind of a quirky bit of storage. I mean, as I said earlier, in some regards, it'd be smarter to just throw, throw away this base and build a complete cabinet that goes under it. I was trying to come up with storage that A, just used scrap wood and B, did not mess with the base that much because I guess years ago when I built this, I sort of thought I might sell the bandsaw and I wanted to keep it as original as possible. And if you build this big custom wooden base under it, I think it's not so original. This comes out in, as you saw, less than two minutes and then you're just left with an original bandsaw. So. And of course you could just put some drawers in here if you wanted, I just haven't bothered. So at this point it's been less than a half hour since I finished this and I'm already, I'm wishing I'd done it ages ago. It just feels much more free and mobile than with this old base. This one goes straight, no problem, but you can't really spin it and that wheel's completely seized I'm seeing now. Should have got rid of this long ago. And I think that's about it for this quick mobile base experiment. I'm gonna live with it now. Check back in six months, ask me if I still like it. And if you watch my last video, you know I've been just thinking about rearranging and this now gives me the ability to take this bandsaw and position it here and try it out or throw it across the room with very little effort. Thanks for watching.